So say there's some religious activity in public. Maybe somebody wants to pray over their lunch at school and they're told they can't do that. And they say, well, you can't do that because of separation of church and state. Is that what separation of church and state really means? They will say yes. Here's the way you respond. Number one, where does that phrase come from? And when they say the Constitution, you say, would you please read it for me? Because when they go there, they'll never find it. It does not appear anywhere in the Constitution. And the second thing you do is, wait, we just read the Constitution. It says Congress shall make no law. How does a kid praying over their lunch mean the same as Congress making a law? And the third thing you ask them is, and by the way, if praying over your lunch is so bad, why did we do it for 180 years under the Constitution, and it's only been in recent years that we have not done that? Did we just invent separation church and state? No, it's been there from the beginning, but we've twisted it to mean something that it doesn't mean. So if you ask them those three questions, you can win your argument.